The American Revolution Center is, is blessed to have a, a wonderful collection of engraved powder horns from the Revolutionary War uh, period. These were uh, items carried by most soldiers in the American armies, and they were a unique form of American folk art that develops in the colonies a uh, generation before the American Revolution. The cow horn, of course, is um, sort of like the plastic of the 18th century. It was a, a very um, flexible, uh, waterproof, fireproof uh, material. It could be formed under heat and uh, turned into uh, a, a waterproof container for gunpowder that soldiers would have to carry. Um, and of course it was a, a short step from there to soldiers in their idle time uh, recording their impressions of uh, the military life in the camps and campaigns uh, of early America. And so uh, they range in, in decoration from very beautifully engraved, almost professionally engraved uh, map horns or horns that show um, for instance, an image of the city of Philadelphia from the period of the 1750s or 1760s. Um, they also are a great document for understanding the military experiences of common soldiers, the type of people from early America who often do not leave letters or journals or diaries that allow us to sort of uh, plumb their uh, experiences and thoughts about their military service. Um, the surviving examples are particularly rich from New England. We have a, a wonderful example uh, from 1777, for instance, uh, here. It was made for a man named Samuel Dudley. His horn made at Warwick, which is in Rhode Island, in December of 1777. And as you'll see, in addition to giving some details of places of service and, and, and and uh, circumstances of military service. They also will have wonderful, whimsical little folk art images. There's a, an image of a, a, a mother and a, a calf, a moose here, uh, a pair of soldiers who are uh, doing a sort of mock sword fight uh, with the uh, inscription, try it out, between these two uh, soldiers. Another New England example here is this wonderful and very, very important image of uh, the city of Boston. This belonged to a man named Abel Scott. It was engraved um, uh, during the siege of Boston during the winter of 1775 and depicts an image looking across from the site of um, Breed's or Bunker Hill uh, across the Back Bay to Boston uh, in December of 1775. Abel Scott served five campaigns during the American Revolution. We know um, a lot of details about his service because at age 81 in 1832, he applied for a pension from the government and recorded a lot of the details of his service, including uh, his service going back to 1775 and the first campaign of the American Revolution. Uh, the final example I have here uh, comes from far to the south, from Virginia actually, although this um, form of engraved powder horn really um, develops in New England in particular in the 1740s and 50s. By the time of the Revolution it had spread throughout the colonies and uh, this horn here uh, belonged to a man named William Waller from uh, Virginia, from the Valley of Virginia, Shenandoah Valley who enlisted in 1776, served in one of the rifle companies that went off to support the Continental Army under George Washington. One of the wonderful things about Waller's horn is the patriotic inscriptions, um, liberty or death, which of course are the words attributed to Patrick Henry, a fellow Virginian of, of Waller's, uh, the sentiment appeal to heaven, which was uh, something used on a lot of regimental flags and patriotic um, inscriptions in New England uh, during the early part of the American Revolution. And the very, uh, I think, sobering re motto, kill or be killed, which of course reminds us that this was a serious, um, deadly business, the, the business of winning American independence in the American Revolution. And while we can tend to focus on the sometimes the glamour and the, uh, the uh, colorful uniforms and the flags and this sort of thing, this uh, was a deadly conflict and proportionally the most deadly conflict um, for the American population after the American Civil War.